I mean, I feel like if you're on top, you're not. You can't really call it self-defense. But it's not self-defense if you're on top. You don't think it's self? You just walk away, right? You always say. You just walk away. You always say that. If they're like trying to kill you, then like I understand like it, if you'd be on top. But like if you just take them down, why would you stay on top of them? In this video, I'm gonna teach these two schmucks why ground and pound can be a viable self-defense choice. It's not that. It's not that. Cause you're, you've said in a million videos, you can just walk away. Don't be the aggressor. But what happens when you can't walk away? Let's say, boom, bingo. Hey. Hey. Let's say we get to here. For this video, I think we'll mostly do from like Neon Belly. Come on, wake up. I think we'll mostly do from like Neon Belly. I think uh, Neon Belly is a great self defense position because it gives me the opportunity for sure just to go like this. All right? Control the hands. They'll probably be fighting and trying to grab you. Oh, a lot of times when I get super oppressive, they'll try to push. They'll try to push on this, right? You get this knee off of me, right? And then that gives me, whoo! I can get free and clear, right? So why and how would I want to continue to attack this person if it truly was self-defense? So maybe you're already kind of like, okay, I see where he's going. There's a reason that you might want to give somebody a couple shots. Let's say like, you know, we're fighting. Boom. Take down, right? I start to secure this neon belly. Right, I get to here. I stand up. Maybe I think I'd be free and clear, but maybe he's holding on to me, right? And I can't get up, and I just give him a crack, and then I get loose. But that's not really ground and pound. When people think about ground and pound, they think about like multiple strikes. Boom, boom, boom. So why would you do that? You got anything? Hey, F you, pal. And you're like, hey, F me, pal. F you, pal. <laughs> yeah, we do this for a while. And then you take me down to the ground. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> so we're on the ground and we're fighting. And you're like, uh. And you're like, all right. And then you pin, you like, you get me. And I'm like, and you're like, all right, chill out, dude. Chill out, chill dude. Out, chill out. Chill out, dude, bro. And then like this starts happening, right? So I've got a weapon, and it doesn't have to be this, it could be the knife. I've got a weapon, so now, can you just stand up right now? No. No, and now, realistically, you probably start trying to isolate this. Yeah, you probably yeah. do some stuff like this. So now you've maybe like done something with this, right? Mm -hmm. But I've got you in my, my shitty closed guard, right? So if you were mounted on top of me, right, you could go after this more aggressively. Right, you could really start to fight for this gun, or knife, or whatever. But if I've got some legs in between us, go back where we were. But if I've got some legs in between us, right, and you're really trying to go after this gun, right, it's like harder, right? So now, what do you have free? You got a right hand free. Mm -hmm. So you give me a shot. Boom. Oh, you went with an elbow. I'm so glad you did, because that's what we're going to talk about, about my favorite type of strike to use in this scenario. So you went for an elbow, but maybe that didn't do it, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You bash my fucking head into the ground until this happens. Then you strip that gun. Then you get up and walk away. Now we all agree that there are scenarios where you can't just get up and uh, walk away. You know, maybe, uh, maybe we go here. Oh, I get to this knife and I'm trying to get to this knife and Jay is like bigger and stronger than me, right? And I get to hear to my oppressive neon belly, right? And he really feels all the wrath of my knee. Oi! Right? So now we've got to occupy the hands. That's why I think neon belly and wrist control is more important in self defense than it might be in like playing jujitsu. If I've got this, my favorite types of strikes here are these short elbows that don't require me to give up control. I think these are super powerful. Anything that doesn't require me to give up control is really cool. Um, the thing about ground and pound in a Street Fighter self-defense scenario too, this is something, I don't know if it gets touched on a lot, is that the average mook that would mug you, rob you, or whatever, has, doesn't have the attributes of a combat sports athlete. 
So when it comes to ground and pound, they don't have to be big, huge shots, giving you short strikes, right? All right, bang, bang. All right, little short strikes. I don't have to give up as much balance. If I miss a huge shot, if I do like this and maybe you tuck your head down this way, uh, right, and I miss this big shot and go off balance, that would suck with yeah. this in play. But if I give you little short ones while I'm trying to get control of this, and I know you guys are all thinking, well, you should just like, you know, I keto <laughs> the knife out of his hand, right? <laughs> No thanks. I want some gross motor, high percent, high percentage shit yeah. that I know works. So I don't want big, huge bombs. I don't need them. This guy's weak little sissy civilian neck <laughs> is not going to hold his head up off the pavement. So I like the short strikes from wrist control, but I'm going to show you like one bonus tip. This short elbow from wrist control works on the feet as well. It works up against the wall really well. Right? Woo! Walk right into that. Woo! <laughs> uh, we did a video on it, so I won't go too in depth on that. I want to show you a different one, though. So let's look at, you know, um, hey, let's look at, hey, 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 okay, all right. Now we're in business. Now, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna frame his face away. Got his face framed away. I don't want to go like this, boom, because this is a good handle, right? If you do like this, Jay doesn't know anything about grappling or wrestling or jujitsu, um, and he starts trying to move, right? He's pretty strong. His, his spine's all in alignment. If I turn his face, now try to move, he'll, he, he'll tell you right now, it like feels, he feels way weaker mm -hmm. and less comfortable. So you turn their face away. If I pull my arm back, he's immediately going to start fighting back, right? So I don't pull my arm back. I'm gonna pull this hand, not literally pull with this hand, but I wanna imagine that I'm just pulling that out of the way. Just whoosh. I think this used to show up more in a, you know, old school MMA before the grappling got a little higher level, right? There's some, there's some danger to this from some positions, but cross face, right? I just need to go boom. That's it, I just, I ne this never goes that way. I just replace it like this. This is brutal. And again, it doesn't have to be a hard shot. How hard do you think that has to be? Let's look at how to practice that. Check this out, Jay. No, let's do this. We're gonna put our weight on this hand, all right? The first couple times you do this, you'll end up with this kind of crappy like, meh, all right? Put our weight, you know, like, that's not very powerful. Elbow, yeah. Again, we're attacking with the front of the elbow, not like the pointer back. Right. This hand is what? Put all your weight on that one. So it could be on the ground. We don't want to put too much weight in it. We want to really push their mat, match their face down. And that's it. All right. Just so imagine, put all your weight on this hand. All right. And someone's going. Whoosh, whoosh. That's it. It just cut. You just remove the weight. You never uh, recoil. You never draw it back. Bing. So like if you don't have um, like a uh, bag or anything to practice on, you could even make this like part of your um, your circuit training or your strength training for you know MMA or self defense or whatever. Say you're doing push ups, right? Put this here, right? And this is hard because it's gonna move, so we're probably gonna mess it up a couple times. We move the weight and drop it, right? Push up, post. Post, 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 put heavy, move the weight and drop it and see if you can get it before it gets away. Because if you're not quick and you're kind of lazy about it, you'll move it, right? But if you really mash it and you're really quick, you can catch the glove. Yeah, don't pick it up. Picking it up makes it easier because it's the glove, right? If we pick our hand up, okay, right? So heavy, quick. Enough. Quick, oh, I missed. Whoosh. It shouldn't, we shouldn't see the glove bounce too much. That's a little better. Whoosh. It's gonna come up a little bit as it sticks to your hand and rebounds. That's better. If you did that to me, from whatever position, you can mount me, whatever. From whatever position, right? 
you mash my face and turn my face, mm -hmm. when you remove that hand, my natural instinct is gonna be, I'm gonna turn my face yep. back to where it came from. So you move that hand and I do this and I catch this thing in the teeth, nose, eyes, jaw, neck. It doesn't really matter. This weapon is one of the most dangerous, painful parts of the body to get hit with. Maybe you can't leave. Maybe you're locked in a room with somebody. Maybe you're stuck. Maybe if you get up, he's going to be between you and your safe exit, right? Maybe you've got a stroller with a kid in it and you can't. You know that if you just let him up, you're not going to be able to get away. Maybe he's going for his waistband or a knife or something. Maybe you're a police officer, a security guard, or, or um, you know, a, a corrections officer, and he's going for your stuff. Or you have a duty to subdue this person, right? So no, you can't like tee off and just start raining down punches, right? Uh, unless you know we're in a lethal force context. But the purpose of this punch—that's why I didn't say do big ones. You get no, come here. You do a little shot to make me change what I'm doing. If I'm going for like this, and you give me a little shot. And I'm gonna go, okay, don't do that. And you give me a little shot again, right? And then once it's, I seem defeated, you've ensured I have no weapon, and there's no context that requires you to continue this fight, then you can safely get away. We're gonna be doing more of these videos about shit for self-defense that you don't think is self-defense. You know what we're gonna do next? We're gonna do um, attacking someone from behind in self-defense. <laughs> and throwing the first punch in self-defense.